Well, hi, my name is Greg and you're watching chapter 17 of my 1949 P3 Rover restoration story. Uh, if you've been watching this series, you'll, you'll know that I'm fairly well progressed with the restoration on my P3 Rover. And in the last chapter, uh, I began to cover the reassembly process after I'd had some quite extensive uh, rust repair uh, and the painting done on the car. Uh, however, in this chapter, I'm going to take a bit of a, a step back in time and uh, cover some work that I did, uh, I think, a few years ago now, uh, where I did some work on restoring uh, the heater, or actually the heater to mister, uh, of the car back to working order uh, after it hadn't worked for many, many years. Uh, there'll be, a, I guess, a bit of a, a familiar pattern with how I, I go about producing this video, or I'll, I'll cover uh, really the problem-solving exercise that I went through, uh, explain you know, why I went about doing the job in the way that I did. Um, so I hope you find that interesting and informative uh, and I hope to see you a bit later in the video. Bye for now. To start with I just have a few shots uh, just after I'd removed the heater box from the car and I was uh, starting to take it apart. In the shed now I've got the heater box apart and uh, here's the heater core. Uh, I'll just pick it up and show you. So it's got a couple of pipes. Uh, so there's a pipe there for coolant water to come in and, and to exit. Uh, essentially it's a heat exchanger. Uh, but I had some issues with it. It leaked like a sieve. Uh, so I had to get that repaired. So I ended up taking it actually to a radiator repair place. Uh, as the process for repairing it is quite similar to, to a radiator repair. Moving on to the rest of the assembly. You have this nice uh, cast casing which is mounted against the backing plate which I've cleaned up now and then there's an electric motor that sits in there with this uh, four blade fan at one end to sort of draw air past the heater core and then at the other end of the electric motor you have what I'd describe as a paddle fan uh, which as far as I can see his main job is to uh, push air out uh, through two outlets in, the, in that casing. Here's the two outlets in the casing I was talking about uh, these outlets then have a, a flexible pipe connected to them uh, which takes uh, warm air to the windscreen uh, to give you the uh, demister effect. These mating parts had uh, rubber seals between them, which uh, to be honest I didn't initially recognise as rubber seals because they were so badly deteriorated, as you can see in some of these uh, photos about to come. Here you can see the inlet and outlet pipes to the heater core with uh, what was left of the rubber seal. At first I thought these parts were joined with bitumen, uh, but no, it's uh, just 70 year old rubber. Some pretty heavy rust stains on the backing plate from where the heater core had leaked over the years. Uh, just a few random shots of the disassembly here. Uh, delving into the internals of the electric motor now, uh, which I found really interesting. It uh, really gave me an insight into uh, old uh, technology. Uh, so the shaft that went through the motor was supported by uh, two bronze bearing bushes like so uh, and around these uh, bronze bearing bushes you had a, a felt ring. I uh, wasn't really familiar with this but uh, the idea of the felt ring uh, as I understand it is that it would be soaked in oil uh, acting as a bit of an oil reservoir for the bronze bearing. The bronze bearing bushes were uh, sort of mounted in this sort of recess which you can see in, in the bottom of the casing. Uh, so you had this arrangement at, at either end of the motor. Before pulling it apart I tested the motor and it worked but it squealed quite badly because these bearing bushes were one very dry and, and also quite worn out. I decided to replace the original bronze bearing bushes with modern seal bearings as you can see here. Uh, however this did require a bit of work. I turned up a couple of inserts uh, showing one here uh, which I designed to fit into the bottom of the housing. Uh, in that recess uh, that I'm focusing in on now. I designed the insert so that it would be a precision fit inside the, the motor housing and that in turn uh, the bearing would be a, a precision fit inside the insert. I did consider finding a bearing that would be a direct fit inside this recess but the problem I had was uh, uh, that the diameter of the recess didn't seem to correspond to any uh, sort of logical bearing size. <laughs> And also the diameter at either end of the motor was different by about five thousandths of an inch. Here you can see one of my inserts so fitted into the motor housing. Uh, I'll describe briefly how I turn up these little uh, precision inserts. I started with a piece of aluminium bar which I uh, held in a collet chuck as you can see here. 
I used a high speed steel tool bit to turn the outer diameter as you can see here and then uh, for the bore I uh, first drilled out uh, material to close to the bore size and then I used uh, a little boring barrow that I'm pointing to here. Here's the assembled motor. I'm not sure you can see it too well here but at the top of the motor there are little holes where you can add oil for maintenance lubrication. I like the original design with the bronze bearing bush and the, and the sort of oil reservoir with the, the felt ring. Uh, the only problem in this application was because uh, the motor is quite sort of buried really I and mean, when, when everything's assembled you've got this electric motor that sits uh, you know, deep inside the heater box. Uh, so the idea of uh, you know, adding uh, the occasional drop of oil uh, to, to the motor is, well it's a good idea but it's not ever likely to happen. Uh, so the idea of my sort of bearing redesign was to just to make it more maintenance free uh, but also sort of preserve the original appearance and function as much as I could. Uh, mostly reassembled now and looking a lot uh, cleaner and prettier than it once did. All uh, ready for the test run next. Okay, just give the little uh, motor a bit of a test. Uh, I know it works because I've tested it before, but uh, I'm just really uh, testing it for the purposes of uh, showing it on film now. Uh, okay, so I've just got uh, the two wires for the motor. One's uh, stuck to one end of the battery and I'm just going to... Uh, connect the other end now and see if it works. Beautiful. Uh, so well, as you can't see I should probably put some streamers on the on the two outlets so you can see the air coming out but it, uh, it, it works quite well. And uh, lastly here's a shot of the heater box uh, back in situ. Uh, whilst cleaning up this casing I managed to uh, accidentally erode the writing that you can see on this identification plate but I did have a plan to fix it. Uh, I have managed to obtain some special paper that's designed for making your own decal, so I'm going to have a go at making a decal to replace the old writing. I used an old photo that I'd taken before I'd cleaned the casing up as a reference point uh, to try and match the original uh, font and spacing. It took a little while to get a match, but it worked out okay in the end. The next part of the process was just to coat the paper in two to three coats of uh, clear acrylic. Worked out quite well. Uh, next I cut to size two and a quarter by one inch. Here we have the finished result, uh, close, closer and closest. Uh, really quite happy with how it turned out actually. Well hi again, uh, with this I'll wrap up uh, chapter 19 of my 1949 P3 Rover restoration story uh, covering the restoration work that I did on the heater and demister in my car. Uh, I'll just say a few things as I wrap up uh, today because uh, we are living in pretty unusual times at the moment. Uh, so as I sign off on this chapter on the 15th of May 2020, uh, much of the world is in a, a state of lockdown and uh, efforts to slow the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, in my uh, job outside of uh, tinkering on my P3 Rover, I, I work as a, a middle manager in the healthcare industry. Uh, so as you can imagine, that's uh, had its uh, challenges uh, recently. Uh, I'm, not in the front line but I'm really just one step removed from those who are. Um, so it's been both a good and a bad thing. Uh, the good news is I'm not likely to be out of work anytime soon. Uh, the bad news is uh, I've uh, been extra busy at work and uh, therefore I uh, haven't had as much time uh, to spend uh, tinkering on my P3 as I, as I would have liked. Uh, however I'm very much aware that in the grand scheme of things that's a, a pretty small uh, problem to have. Uh, in an environment where you know, many have uh, lost their work in recent times. Uh, so I'm very much aware of that and, and thankful that I, I do have a job. Uh, so as I wrap up this chapter, I, uh, I trust uh, that you're all keeping safe and well uh, and uh, just to let you know uh, what to expect in future chapters. I've, I've half finished a, a few uh, chapters where I'm covering uh, quite a diverse range of work. Uh, including uh, quite a bit of general assembly on the car, uh, the rewiring of the car which I've almost finished now, uh, uh, woodwork refinishing, I've done refinished the dash and, and some other woodwork uh, and uh, the early stages of motor trimming uh, and probably a few other things as well. Uh, but anyway uh, I'll wrap up for now and uh, I'll see you next time.